So you need to install a Luminor Black Home Rack Ultraviolet Disinfection System to make sure the water at your home cottage or cabin is bacteria free and safe for your family. But you've never installed one of these before and you want to make sure you do it right the first time. No problem. In this video, I'll go through the whole process step by step. I'll include some of my own tips and tricks to make sure you can easily install one of these by yourself. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. This video is perfect for the do-it-yourself home cottage or cabin owner that wants to install one of these to make sure the water is safe and bacteria-free for your family. By the end of this video, you'll fully understand how and where to install one of these Luminor Black Home Rack Ultraviolet Disinfection Systems to make sure they perform perfectly and that you can easily maintain them in the future. You'll definitely want to hang around to the end of this video because throughout, I'll explain and demonstrate the installation tips and tricks that I use so you can install like a pro. And by the way, Luminor makes the rack UV systems for Culligan, Water Depot, Nelson, and a bunch of other companies, so the same installation applies to those systems too. Not sure how these UV systems work? No problem. I've got a great YouTube video that explains the whole process. I'll put a link in the description down below. So here we are at tip number one, pre-treatment requirements. So you need to make sure that the water is clear, colorless, and isn't going to stain anything before it goes through the ultra via disinfection system. So, and these are the requirements that they have. The iron has to be less than 0.3 parts per million. Hardness, seven grains per gallon or less. So if your water's hard, you have to soften it first. Turbidity, less than one. Uh, manganese, less than 0.5 parts per million. Manganese is that black staining. Tannins, less than 0.1 parts per million. And ultraviolet transmittance, 75%. That means 75% of the ultraviolet light needs to be able to pass through that water to be able to kill that bacteria. And then we come to tip number two, and that is in the terms of your water filtration equipment, where does the ultraviolet system go? It goes at the very end, because we wanna go through all the process of cleaning up the water first, just like this. So as you can see in this rather extreme example of water filtration, the water comes from the well, goes through the pressure tank, goes through all the filtration equipment, then it goes to the UV, and then if you have reverse osmosis, that would be after the UV system. Tip number three is make sure you're prepared for the installation. So you need to think about where you're gonna be installing this. Now it does need to be installed indoors. I also suggest that you install it with a surge suppressor. That's gonna protect the electronics in the ultraviolet disinfection system. Also consider the direction of flow. So the water flows in through this side and then goes through and then flows through the ultraviolet light and then goes back through this, the same side that it came in. Now if your water flows left to right, it would be configured this way. But if your water flows right to left, you could turn the whole thing around. To do that, you'd have to undo the bolts at the top of the manifold here, switch these filters around, switch the UV chamber around to complete the installation. Tip number four is installation location compatibility. So you need to plan for the maintenance of the system in the future. So you need to leave some space underneath the filter housings to be able to unscrew them and to drain those filter housings. Also, you need to think about space above because there's gonna be a pipe coming out of here that's gonna to go to your plumbing. Obviously, it's gonna come up for a couple inches and then head out. So you need to think about that. Also, you need to think about the UV lamp gets changed on the left side when it's configured this way. So the lamp is almost two feet long. So make sure you've got enough space in fact, two feet of space on the left side to be able to install and of course remove that lamp and to get access to clean the sleeve in the future. So once you check out the manual, you'll see that the manufacturer recommends putting in a bypass around the ultraviolet system. Not sure what I mean? Let me show you. In the manual, they show that the water passes through the water softener or the pre-filtration. That makes perfect sense. And then it goes up through here. And this is what we're, I'm talking about here is this bypass assembly. So they, they're showing this as being installed here, but I don't recommend it. And I'll explain to you why. So how this works is that this valve is normally open, water flows into the UV, the water flows back out of it, and then this valve is normally open, although in this picture it looks like it's closed, and then it continues on to the whole household. But this valve needs to be closed at all times. And as you can see in this picture, it has actually open. So the problem with these, in fact, we just had one of these this week when we were out at a customer, is that this wasn't working for them, and we found out that they had some plumbing work done at the house a couple weeks ago, and some plumber was there, and what happened was, to shut off the water flow, they closed this valve, they closed this valve, this valve was already closed, they did the work, and when the work was done, they came back, they opened this valve, opened this valve, opened this valve, now they had great flow, but guess what? 
none of the water ran through the UV system. Tip number six is you can definitely do the installation all with copper, all soldered together, no problem. But if you're not that familiar with soldering, you can definitely do this as a solder-free installation by using shark bites, PEX fittings, threaded fittings. As we're going through the process, I'll explain that too. So once you've figured out exactly where you're gonna install it, and how you're gonna install it, the next step is to actually put the manifold on the wall. So I always recommend that you mount it with a two by six or a two by four. Make sure that piece of wood is long enough that you're catching two studs and that you firmly anchor that to the two studs. And then you put the UV system the rack system onto that. You can just screw it on or you can use lag bolts. They work really well. So this is a 15 gallon per minute system and you need to make sure that your water flow doesn't exceed 15 gallons per minute. If you're not 100% sure, then you would install a flow restrictor to make sure that it's restricted to 15 gallons per minute. So the next step is you're gonna shut off the water in your household and you're gonna open up a faucet downstream where the UV is gonna be installed to release all the pressure and to drain most of the water out of the system. So once you've decided what kind of materials you're gonna use, make sure you get the correct fittings. This is one inch female connection in here. So since I'm using three quarters of an inch here, I need a bushing to take it from one inch down to three quarters of an inch. Now you can get some of these bushings in plastic. I prefer the stainless steel ones and you can get them from any plumbing supply place. Like I said, the plastic ones do work okay. It's just that we have had problems in the past that they can crack. So we tend to use the stainless steel ones instead. So then you're gonna also wanna put a shutoff valve on the water coming into the system for future service. So wherever you use threaded fittings, you're going to wrap it three times with Teflon tape and use pipe dope because you want to make a nice watertight seal. And again, this would be you'd have the Teflon tape and the pipe dope on there to make a nice watertight seal. So on the outlet side up here, you need to make sure you use a reducer like this to take it down from the one inch thread to whatever size you're using, unless you're continuing on with the one inch piping. So in this case, I'm using three quarters of an inch. So again, I've got this uh, reducer and the other thing you have to keep in mind too, is you don't want that ultraviolet light shining directly on PEX pipe. So in other words, you don't wanna have a fitting up there that takes it directly to PEX. So what you can do is you can use an elbow like I have here. You're gonna start off with a, a bit of copper, but then you're gonna switch over to PEX, but that way the light that shines through this pipe isn't gonna be shining directly on the PEX because it's gonna be shining inside this elbow and then it's gonna head out to the PEX through the whole installation. And again, we would have this shut off valve to make sure in the future when we do maintenance on the system we can shut off the water in the whole household to make sure all the whole house doesn't drain back down through the system while we're doing the maintenance. So while handling the UV lamp and the cord sleeve, you need to wear gloves. You can either wear rubber gloves like these ones here, or you can wear soft uh, cotton gloves. So the next thing we need to do is remove these caps on both ends here. Oh, this one's already off. So then this needs to be connected to the reaction chamber. And so you line that up. And again, you would use uh, Teflon tape on here and plumber's dope to make sure you make a nice watertight seal. And then you grab the sleeve. Now you need to be careful. The sleeve is very fragile. So you need to carefully remove it from the packaging. And then you need to carefully feed it into the reaction chamber. Now you need to make sure you feed it in fairly straight. You don't want to feed it in on an angle, either up or either down, because there's a series of little kind of like fingers inside here that's going to grip the end of the sleeve as you pass it in to hold it in place. And you can see it's now in place. Next, you grab the O-ring and you slide it over that cord sleeve. But before you do, you need to add some of the clear silicone grease that comes with the system to make sure the O-ring is well lubricated. Next, you grab the gland nut and as you thread that over the sleeve, that's gonna hold the sleeve in place. And later on, it's also gonna hold the lamp in place. And you need to tighten it firmly, but it has a positive stop at the end. And again, this is only tightened by hand. You don't need any tools to do this. Very important next step is you need to slide the stainless steel spring inside that chamber. Now this stainless steel spring is very important because it provides some of the pressure back onto the lamp to make sure it all fits in correctly. So you just pop that inside. And by the way, if you're looking for more information on these Luminor Black Home Rack Ultraviolet Disinfection Systems, you can go to our websites, either watereastore.com in the United States or watereastore.ca in Canada. We offer free shipping and discount pricing. So next up, you're installing water filters that go into these filter housings. So as the water flows 
goes in, it would go through a sediment filter first, then it would go through the carbon filter, and then it would go onto the UV light, and then onto the whole house. So for a sediment filter, I always recommend something like this. It's a dual gradient filter, 50 microns on the outside, five microns on the inside. So that will go inside this housing. And for the carbon filter, either a five or 10 micron carbon filter will work just fine. So then using the filter housing wrench that comes with the system, you just use that to unscrew the filter housings. And again, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Remove the filter housing. And then you can see the O-ring at the end here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna coat that O-ring with a thin layer of that plumber's clear silicone grease that came with the system and then pop the filter inside. So then I recommend you just tighten the filter housing hand tight, but then use the filter housing wrench just to give a little bit more, just to make sure it doesn't leak. And then you do the same thing with the carbon filter in this housing. So when unpacking the UV lamp, again, you wanna use those uh, rubber gloves and be careful, watch for the key. This is the key that comes with every lamp and you need to make sure that this key is used with this lamp. Carefully remove the lamp from the packaging. Now you can't handle the lamp by the ceramic ends with your bare hands, but I always suggest you just wear the gloves. It's much easier that way. And you need to be very careful with these lamps because they are quite fragile. So next we slide it into the chamber. Next up, the controller gets mounted on the front of the system. So you just thread the bolt through, slide it in and add the nut. Both the nuts and the bolts come with the system, one for the top and one for the bottom. And then you tighten it up. Once again, already tidy, lefty loosey. Next, you need to carefully unpack that lamp key, this one here, and you need to make sure you orientate it with the label facing out and right side up. And it plugs into the right hand side. And again, whenever you change the lamp, you need to change the key at the same time. So at the end of the cable that comes with the controller is the LumiLock plug. And that's what plugs directly into the end of the lamp. So you just take it up and turn the lamp so it fits right in and you just wiggle a little bit, just carefully to push it right home so it's right flush. And then you just push it in, turn this a little bit, and you'll see that it locks in place. So next you need to attach the grounding screw. So with the other end of the lamp cord plugged into a surge suppressor, just to make sure we protect the electronics, the next step is to plug it in and it's gonna go through its startup procedure. So you can see the little bar scanning across as it's going through its startup, initializing everything, making sure it checks everything out. And as it's starting up, it starts looking for some of the accessories that are available for the systems, like the solenoid, the concierge, and a few other things. And if those were present, it would find them at this point. And now it's optimizing the lamp for performance. And now it's completed and it's telling us that it's 420 days before the lamp needs to be replaced. And once again, there's a QR code on the screen that we can scan that with our smartphone, click on the bar. And once again, there's a lot of information there for you. So the next step is to fill the whole system with water and disinfect all your plumbing downstream of the ultraviolet light. What do you mean disinfect it? Isn't this supposed to disinfect it? Well, it will, but the problem is all the water that's downstream of the ultraviolet disinfection system may have bacteria in it, and that would reinfect the water that this UV is disinfecting. Now, if you're not sure about how to do that disinfection process, I've got a great YouTube video that shows you how. I'll put a link in the description down below. So once you've removed this filter and added the chlorine to do the disinfection, the next step is to fill the whole system with water. And to do that, you'd open up the inlet valve. Now, I always suggest you open it up about halfway and let the system fill and that way you're checking for leaks at the same time once the system has totally filled with water there's no leaks everything's good to go then you can open it up all the way and then you can open up the valve that feeds water to the whole house again open it up half the way to make sure that you don't have any leaks once there's no leaks open it up all the way and then continue on with the whole disinfection process. Click up here for your next video on ultraviolet disinfection and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments? No problem. Add them down below. I read them all. I'd love to answer yours.